This episode of Midco Sports Magazine is presented by Shields and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Hello and welcome to this Midco Sports Magazine special, A Shot at Redemption. Michael Loris only played one year at South Dakota State, but his impact on the Jackrabbits and their fan base will live on for generations. Orris was a graduate transfer looking for one last opportunity to redeem a college basketball career that had not gone according to plan. What he found was that much like his life, the 2016-2017 season wouldn't exactly play out the way he had anticipated. But when it was all said and done, something he had practiced his entire life would change everything. Let's give it up for our new men's basketball coach, TJ Otzelberger. We looked at the team the year before and, and, and realized quickly that there had been four guys that had played point guard in years past. It was Marshall. Out to Marshall and George Marshall. Stays hot. It was Parks. Parks. Look it up and go down. DeAndre Parks. It was Moffitt. Moffitt with a steal. Right to the rim and in for Moffitt. And even Biddle at times. There's Biddle with the steal. And so felt like we really had a need at that point guard position. Some with some experience. I didn't really know if I wanted to use the grad transfer, uh, honestly. I think I was so just fed up with college basketball at that point with how my career went. I talked to TJ on the phone and within 10 to 15 minutes of our hour conversation, I knew he was something special. I knew the way he talked about South Dakota State was something special. Once I had that first conversation with Michael, felt like he could really fit what it meant to be a Jackrabbit uh, basketball player. He could be someone that could help, um, you know, as a coach on the floor. I could tell right away he was a, he was a really special dude. He was really passionate, really cared about you know, everything that was going on. At that point in time, we knew we really wanted Michael. Um, we wanted him to be comfortable with us, comfortable with Brookings, com comfortable with the school. Early on, we had those struggles back and forth where what I was looking for from Michael, and and uh, I think that guys who've been in this program will understand that I'm very demanding out of the point guard position. We butted heads early uh, on some things, and some other things happened, but, um, you know, I was in the doghouse with him. I remember, uh, vividly, there's a lot of times I said to him, I need you to lead as a fifth year senior that you are in the veteran. And if you're not going to lead the way that I want you to lead, we'll play the younger guys. I wanted him to have that sense of ownership and accountability that he was going to run the team the way that I wanted. He was going to get guys involved. He was going to command huddles. It's a grad transfer, so. You look anxious. You didn't been through a couple years. You been through the hardships and the adversity, and you just ready to get to it right away. And it took him a time. You know, the adjustment was kind of longer than it was supposed to be. It was really tough, and um, him staying strong and standing firm and what he was trying to do and teach me through that time um, forever changed me. I remember as we were getting ready to prepare for Wichita State, Michael came to me and said, "Coach." I'll do what you want. I'll do whatever you need. I just want to play. I know I can help this team. And then I knew that that was the point where he was ready to come in and be impactful for us. I think that's what Michael did. He did such a great job of just staying mentally prepared through that entire time. He was ready to go when his number was called again. I didn't quit. Um, and I showed him that, you know, my commitment to you, my commitment to SDSU was what I was going to put ahead of myself and what I was going to put ahead of anything else. Back again to five, telling, using good looking at three, and another miss. 
Jacks have missed eight shots in a row. Miller for the lead. Count it for Paul Miller, and he's going to the free throw line. Tyus online again. Marcus Tyus is killing him. For the win. Boom. And a timeout for South Dakota State. Disappointment, confusion, frustration, irritation. I mean, so many different things. There was so much going on in all of our heads. I, I mean, I remember thinking back to that time. I mean, we'd sit at home and we'd just be like, what are we doing? It was a weird deal with our team. Guys trying to fit into places. It was tough, uh, not only for us, but the entire Jackrabbit community. I mean, we were just so used to winning. I felt like I was failing. I felt like um, I was very humble and needed to uh, look inside introspectively and say, what am I not doing? Where am I falling short? I would never say we were defeated, but we were close to it. And it was, it was that rock bottom point where you're like, all right guys, like now we see what we're made of. Midco Sports Magazine on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Welcome back to A Shot at Redemption, a Midco Sports Magazine special. It's January 2017, and Michael Loris has made amends with his head coach, TJ Otzelberger. But the Jackrabbits have yet to amend their poor start to the conference season. For a brief period of time, South Dakota State is dead last, ninth place in the Summit League, in danger of not even qualifying for the conference tournament in Sioux Falls. It would have been an unparalleled disaster, and the whole team knew it. There was just a, a switch that we had to flip by everybody looking in the mirror, especially you know us as players and even the coaches, and saying like enough is enough. Through the course of the year, we had started 13 different guys and tried a lot of different combinations, but each team evolves at a different rate and pace. And and for that group, it wasn't till that late January, early February that we really had established an identity. Well, guys started defining their roles themselves instead of you know relying on the coaches and us telling each other. We were on the road at Omaha and the vibe, the, I don't know, everything about it just, just felt different. It just was different and you could, you could see it in guys' eyes, you could see it in their body language that things were just starting to click. At halftime, um, it's the one time I've ever seen Coach Otts just blow up. He looked at us and said, we're not losing this game. And I think that was kind of the turnaround. It seems like the first game of the Summer League Tournament is always the hardest mentally just because it's like, okay, we have so much going on, we have a ton of adrenaline pumping, you know, everyone's expecting us to win just because we have so much, so many people there supporting us. And we always tell our guys, you know, once we get past that first game, then we can, then we can, you know, kind of settle in. We felt like we can dominate the game from start to finish. You know, we just did our job. We, we slowed down the point guard. I mean, got out in transition. We just ran our offense the way we were. There's no secret that we don't like South Dakota and they don't like us. I think guys were chomping at the bits for that game. We was calm, but we was kind of anxious as well. Because that's a rival. We love those games in South Dakota. Dickerson hits the gas. Oh my! How did that go in? He's gotten it going a little bit here. And now Mooney, whoa! Dickerson in transition, the way it is going. They kind of punched us in the mouth. They had great energy. Um, we didn't respond the way we needed to get started. And they just jumped on us early. They did a great job with scouting reports and being prepared and knowing our personnel and all that kind of stuff. We were overamped, um, and, and sometimes when you're overamped for a game, you kind of lose focus on what you need to do each and every possession. Slam. That ought to end 
inject a little life in the Jackrabbit faithful. Dunking like that, I think that was a huge momentum shift for us. Lane took the shot and uh, nobody really checked me out. Um, so I, I saw it go up and I mean, it, it just came off the rim perfectly. So I went up with one hand and, and grabbed it and threw it down. All I remember was just telling Reed, you need to do that every play. Every play, if it come off the rim, go get it. Energy plays in a game like that are huge. They're momentum plays that they're worth a lot more than two points. I'm glad that that ball honestly came off like that because uh, that was a pretty big energy play and our team kind of needed that. I just remember thinking in my mind, all right, let's go. Like, it's time now. If we're going to make a run, this is our time to do it. And I think that's, that's when we really started chipping back away at that, at that lead they had. Midco Sports Magazine on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Welcome back to A Shot at Redemption. South Dakota State trails South Dakota by 11 at halftime of the 2017 Summit League Tournament semifinals. Reed Tellinghusen's putback slam late in the first half has invigorated a record crowd of more than 11,000 fans at the Denny Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls. There's still a lot of work to be done, but momentum was squarely on the Jackrabbit side. We said it's not going to come back in one shot. It's not going to come back in one defensive stop. We have to just sit here, chip away. That was our communication. Our guys don't play the scoreboard. Little by little, this is going to come back to us. They're, it'll come back to us, just stay the course. It just took patience. You know, guys, we always sometimes think we can make heroic plays and we can get back in four or five plays. No, it might take 10. It may take the whole game sometimes. When we look at it, you know, we had nothing to lose. We were going out there and we were just playing as hard as we could. And I know that the pressure started getting put on them just because, you know, they're probably, ex they were expected to win it that year. They've been leading the whole game. They're the higher seed. They're the team that people are expecting to win. Now our, our plan was, hey, if we just keep doing what we do, they've got to play tight. They've got to play with the pressure. We've got everything in our favor. And we knew with the crowd as well, they'd get behind us at that point also. Shake it off for us. Nobody else they want taking the shot, and that's why Matt Moody drains the three with 31.9 seconds remaining. The that was a tough shot. You know, you got to give kudos to him. That was, that was an unbelievable shot. Michael Orris was right in his face. In my mind, honestly, I just said, that's a big shot. I'm like, man, he probably sealed the deal. <laughs> honestly, you, you see that go in and you're like, I don't know if we have a chance now, um, just because they had all that momentum. He was a big time player. He made tough shots. So all I was thinking about after that, we got to capitalize. Doesn't get the front end. You missed it, the clock is going. It was a play that was going to be a drive and a pitch back for Mike. Michael Orr is supposed to dribble down the middle middle of the floor, flip it to Mike right at the top of the key. Mike dribbles down. Same play we ran against USD here when Mike made that last second shot. South Dakota State, no timeouts. And got plenty of time. Hand off to Dom, going in against Birch Manning with 2.8. I catch it on the wrong side. Um, because we're trying to initiate the office from the other side. I was a little excited at the time, and I just remember getting down there super soon. I tried to weave it over to get to that side, and Mike is in my way, and we almost run into each other. They screwed it up. <laughs> it was a complete mess. Mike kind of overran the play early, went through a little quicker than we wanted. We wanted him to delay and let Oris get in that gap, but he kind of took off and ran in front of Michael. I was like, okay, this is not good. I bring it down. Nothing's opening up, nothing is, I'm not comfortable with anything at that point. Guys were just not getting the spots, we were just discombobulated, it, it was crazy. Carlton Hurst kind of played off Michael, uh, Mike dove down to the post. I remember thinking like, man, this is really bad spacing because we were, we were so close to each other that his man could have easily came down and, and, and dropped onto me. Honestly, it kind of probably created some confusion for their guys because they didn't know what was going on. Everybody's guarded, you're looking at this, the ball's in my hand, I'm the decision maker, I'm the point guard. At that point, there was no way I was going to give it up. Once he came up, I'm like, 
Oh, he's definitely pulling up. Hey, I got one job <laughs> at that time. Go in the corner, if it miss, you run right to the back side of the rebound and get the rebound. What was going through my head is, He's shooting this, let's go get that offensive board if it comes off. I just remember thinking to myself, I'm crashing the boards hardest that I've ever crashed in my life right now. The ball's in my hands, I'm looking up at the clock, I'm seeing it's going down and it's like, all right, this is it. Does it get the front end, Dom. Now South Dakota's gotta be careful, don't wanna put them on the foul line. Oris backs it out. Of course they wanna go down, rises up, Michael! I felt good as soon as it left my hands. When he rose up, I could just tell, though, the confidence that he had when he rocked right into it. I said, okay. Through the course of the year with Michael, I, there were so many times where he and I had visited about what's the right shot for the team at the right time and just wanted him to know how confident I was in him and his ability to knock down that shot. That muscle memory and that, that, that dedication and that work ethic all these years just came through. That was second thought. As soon as I saw it switch, I was like, I paused for a second. And then I, you know, went crazy after that. The first thing I thought in my mind was, let's go. That's all I was saying. I literally remember turning around, looking right at him in the eyes and just saying, let's go, let's go. That's all I could say. Not that I was, I am or was a bad shooter, it's just that I didn't shoot much. Not because I wasn't capable, just because I didn't necessarily really need to. <laughs> he would always joke with us, he'd be like, I'm not joking, like I used to shoot three-pointers in high school, you know, I was nice, like big time recruit coming out of high school. We said, okay, Michael, like, okay, relax. <laughs> we always make fun of him. Hey, sometimes you miss bad, you know, you miss short. So like, yeah, Michael, don't shoot it. <laughs> All season long, we'd be like, dude, your, your stuff's broke right now. Like, you can't even shoot a layup barely. And I mean, he would just play along and we'd just laugh about it. And I mean, it was funny because I remember joking with him after that even more in the locker room. And he goes, who can't shoot now, Mike? Who can't shoot now? And I said, you're right, you're right. <laughs> this shot is something that's been judged through the years of how well does he shoot it or not shoot it. And he proved on the biggest stage to come through and knock down a huge shot. He worked on it all, yeah. He took, he took the criticism. He learned from him, he kept going the whole year. He, he never let anything stop him from being who he was and what he can do. Don't have a lot of time, Hollins. He'll launch a long three, no. Rebound, and South Dakota State wins. They are going dancing again. I'm not an overly emotional guy, but I think I had a few tears dropping from my eyes. It was just such a relief, I can tell you that, because we've been through so much adversity. we built so much character throughout the year. Just to see it all worked out, you know, it, it was just a great feeling. I couldn't do anything else but collapse. Um, and it was almost like a, like a collapse of, of, of submission to, to what's gone on in my life and um, things I've overcome and been through and, and, and finally just getting over that hump of reaching the pinnacle of Division I basketball athletic sports by winning a championship and going to an NCAA tournament. More than what these stats say and more than what the win or the loss says, I just can't say enough how proud I am of our group and how they've competed uh, the last month and a half of the season and into that game. These guys and what we did this year and, and the bond that we have is something incredibly special that you just don't see in college basketball very often. Coach CJ, he coined it when I first came in, the Michael Orris Redemption Tour. <laughs> and he would always text me that, you know, the Redemption Tour, Redemption Tour, and I think that's exactly what it was. He and I are probably similar in that way with the chip on his shoulder. We kind of worked together and as we got to that second half of the season, I was telling him like, 
This is all about you, man. This is your redemption tour. This is your time to show everybody you're gonna have everything you've ever wanted in this game. A coach who trusts you, teammates who believe in you. You're gonna have the ball in your hands in big moments and you're gonna have the opportunity that winning and losing is gonna fall on your shoulders. And I think as a point guard and as a leader, uh, as a captain, those are the kind of things you want. If I missed that shot, this could have went a lot differently. You know, we're not in the championship game. We're not going to the NCAA tournament. My career is done. That shot changed the course of a lot of things. This shot means the world to me. It's probably the biggest shot in South Dakota State basketball history. It ended up being a storybook ending. That year, South Dakota State made up for every other year before that. TJ sent me a, a picture that, you know, my pick, that my shot is on the practice facility wall. And I mean, it almost brought me to tears. Like, like what? Like, the year, the, the college career I had, the one year being there, like I could be up on, on a wall at a university because of the impact I had, like that is, that feeling is, is beyond anything I've ever felt before and, and extremely, extremely humbling. That's something I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Thanks for watching Midco Sports Magazine. Join us August 26th for brand new stories and a new every other week format. This has been Midco Sports Magazine, presented by Shields and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine.